After a year of being back on a proper human diet, moving from a ketogenic to a carnivore diet and eventually 95% carnivore, I've realized the protocol I need is geared towards striking a balance of variation. Please stay tuned for the rest of the story. This channel is for educational purposes and is dedicated to overall physical, mental, and spiritual wellness. None of the content is intended to diagnose or treat an illness or prescribe a medical protocol. If you are seeking straightforward, no-nonsense information about nutrition and exercise and an educated opinion outside the mainstream, then please stay tuned and consider subscribing. Thank you. Hey folks, Alan Davis here. If you've been following this channel for the last eight months or so, you know I've been through an experience of veganism, the ketogenic diet, reintroducing meat, trying full-blown carnivore, and finding fulfillment in that 90 to 95% carnivore space. However, despite all the other channels where folk tell you all they eat is meat, or they've only eaten meat for about 300 days, even though they've also eaten eggs, and how no one should really be putting vegetables or other carbs down their freaking necks, I want to reemphasize, not so fast. It's not a one-size-fits-all construct. While it's well documented that plants contain anti-nutrients in varying degrees, we don't readily understand the interrelationships, and anyone who says he does is simply blowing smoke up your skirt. Yes, the science shows how anti-nutrients can leach vitamins and minerals from the body, no doubt, and in particular from the food you eat at a given meal when combined. At the same time, we don't know how much nutrient loss occurs in our diets because of anti-nutrients, and the effects vary among individuals based upon metabolism and how the food is cooked and prepared. Many anti-nutrients, for example, like phytates, lectins, and glucosinolates, which are goitrogens, can be removed or de deactivated by soaking, sprouting, fermenting, or boiling before eating it. Keep in mind, Anti-nutrients may also exert health benefits, believe it or not, in certain amounts. Again, no one really knows because these studies are done in vitro. Phytates, for example, have been found to improve the rate of digestion and even prevent sharp rises in blood sugar. Some anti-nutrients have antioxidants and anti-cancer actions and can therefore be safely added to the diet. Furthermore, some anti-nutrients are reported to act effectively in maintaining liver function, preventing or inhibiting osteoporosis, as well as platelet agglutination. Meanwhile, phenolic, uh, phenolic compounds from plant sources, phytic acid, protease inhibitors, saponins, lignans, and phytoestrogens in certain amounts have been demonstrated to reduce cancer risks. Another group of anti-nutrient compounds, like tannins, were found to possess possible antiviral, antibacterial, and antiparasitic effects. Now, before you guys shut this video down and go look at something else, gotta ask the question, does this mean we should eat them willy-nilly, if at all? Absolutely not. For example, researchers have shown how too much plant food can inhibit heme iron and calcium absorption, as well as degrade vitamin D and K2 efficacy, for example. Further, some plant foods can lead to leaky gut, celiac disease, kidney stones, and the like. So, if these are potentially bad for you, then why even bother eating such things? Why not take the advice of those carnivore influencers who cry anathema when it comes to plant foods? Because I don't think it's that simple, folks. Ancestrally, humans have partaken both of meat and of plants when they are in season. Because of that, they might have a place in the overall human diet. I, for one, do not believe humans ever in their existence were strictly carnivore. That is, eating no plant foods whatsoever. As hunter-gatherers, humans consumed significant portions of meat and ate some vegetables and fruit when it was available, in season, and especially during lean times. Moreover, being a faith-based human that I am, there is also a provision to eat these things within the overall construct of a biblical diet. Now, are they to be the center stage? I don't believe so whatsoever. I believe that which I've shared in the past, in particular that in Genesis 9, that meat needs to be the foundation of everything we eat, or should I better say, animal foods. 
I'm sharing this info with you today because many of you still consume fruits and vegetables, and I believe some of you feel guilty doing so. You don't need to feel that way. If you recall, I did a video where I discussed some significant stomach discomfort that began last June, not long after I went 99% carnivore. Really, it was 100%. Things got better at the end of the year and then resurfaced in late January and early February. Using myself as the subject in my experience, experiment, I began to eat small amounts of cruciferous vegetables and some onions once or twice a week my symptoms diminished significantly and now are practically gone. When do they resurface? When I consume too much fat, and that's probably greater than about 70% of my calories from fat, and not enough protein. The small number of cooked veggies I eat are a hunter-gatherer type supplement, if you will, that I find enjoyable and, quite frankly, therapeutic. And you might too. Remember, the concept of hormesis is ever-present. The toxic effect is in the dosage, and everyone is different. If you enjoy eating asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, blueberries, or avocados, then by all means, do what works for you. Do your own homework and find out what plant foods contain what specific types of anti-nutrients and in what amounts. You need to be empowered. You don't need to continually listen, listening to the talking heads on YouTube, myself included. If you know your threshold, then by all means, eat what you enjoy. Let's face it, extremes can be dangerous. Is a carnivore diet an extreme? Yeah, just as much as a vegan diet can be. And at the same time, there are varying degrees within the extreme of carnivory, for example, such that a good mix of ruminants, fish, eggs, and dairy is much more balanced than, for example, a lion-type diet, to each his own. Now, there are times when a total elimination diet is indicated, is entirely appropriate, because you need to target something that might be going wrong. By all means, you alone need to work that out within your family, with your physician, and so forth, and do what's right for you. Frankly, friends, uh, I, I've grown weary of the same stuff, different day videos, amongst so many of the... Uh, influencers and the so-called carnivore influencers, only because some of them have become so dogmatic believing it's their way or the highway. I'm sorry, I, that, that dog don't hunt with me, friends. Um, and quite frankly, I'm not in it for any kind of personal gain. I am here to share what I myself have experienced, what works, what doesn't work, and what potentially could work for you. And I believe a lot of what I share will be beneficial for you a good 80% of the time. That's a good, solid passing grade. And yet, because we're all different, humans notwithstanding, we have to incorporate what works best for us. To sum it up, I believe a meat-centric diet is the best diet for human beings, but what that means to me is balance. 80 to 90% of meat from ruminant animals, fish, eggs, along with some raw dairy, cooked vegetables a couple times a week, and perhaps some blueberries for a treat every now and again. That's what works for me. Does that work for you? Maybe, maybe not. But again, you're going to have to see what works and what kind of symptoms, if any, you know, spawn because of doing something a little bit different. Remember, there are three sides to every coin. That's exactly right. Three sides. You have an obverse, you have a reverse, and you have the edge. And in life, I found that being on that balanced edge is a much, much safer place to be. Now, before you go, please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And also, just so you know, I'll soon be starting another channel that will be more faith-based because many of you have asked me to do so. And I think within the construct of this channel, it's not entirely appropriate. It is to a degree. I mean, I'll say some things every now and then. But some of you have asked for you know that direction to be much more prevalent. And, and I look to indulge you on that. Look for it to happen within the next month or so. Until next time, this is Dr. Alan Davis wishing above all things that you might prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Thanks again for watching. Take care, be strong, and be blessed. Ciao.